Hi, I'm going to use it again with another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile, and this time I am finally bringing back my professor deck. So, of course, the Spellbook Judgment is now back, right now at 1. Obviously, the card is still really broken, but it's uh, not really uh, as good anymore as it was, of course, back in like 2013. But I think it's still pretty good. I did play the deck in the tournament, but it didn't really go that well. I did make a few mistakes and I actually learned quite a lot from the tournament, so I made a few changes from that. So right now I think this uh, best version uh, I can build right now. So I guess let's go as deck. So first the monsters. So first I just used the one High Priestess of Prophecy. One of my absolute favorite cards of course. Unfortunately, um, of course, uh, it's not as good as it was in the past, but it's still pretty good. Of course, I think you know that you have to reveal three spell books, spell cards, but I don't really play as many spell books uh, in this deck uh, as I used to previously, so I think this card is not as live um, of the time, so it can be a little bit tricky, so that's why you only use one, because it is easily searchable as well. There is one Justice of Prophecy, pretty good search out the High Priestess, for example, or other high level light or dark spellcasters, and of course you can get an extra spellbook as well, so that really can be pretty good like uh, to fix your hands or something like that, but of course it's a little bit a uh, slow card, you can also summon it in the end phase with Judgment, so if you don't want to summon Jogan for example, so it's pretty good for that as well. And then, of course, I used the main Prophecy monster, Triple Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, to search out all of your Spellbook spell cards. They're only very important. Then, I use a, a Mythical Beast engine in this deck as well, because it works very well with Spellbook Judgment, and it's just a really good engine to summon up more spellcasters as well. So, I use Triple Mythical Beast Master of Servos. That is really good, of course, search out your musical beast, and it's really good uh, Peter, you can also banish monsters as well. So definitely all around a really good card in this deck. Then use one musical beast Jekyll King. To use with Master Cerebus, you can summon Master Cerebus on deck like with this card. It can be a little bit tricky, but so but what can you do I guess? And the last musical beast that I use is one musical beast basilisk. It's pretty good because it's basically an obstacle goblin shuffle one of your musical beasts uh, back to your deck and draw one card, but also it's a really good beat stick as well. Then use one Chaugan the Spiritualist, which is pretty much your main wing condition in this deck, more or less. Because you're going to summon it with uh, Spell with Judgment in the end phase, and then no one can spell on monsters, which is totally really good. A lot of time uh, you will have your protection for this as well, like. A Splug of Fate, Mirror Forces, or like, even like Plasoic Tonimiscus I use in this deck as well right, right now. So definitely a very important card for this deck, and probably it actually should be banned. And then the only hand trap I use in this deck are Triple Effect Veiler, and the only going second card in this deck as well. Because this deck ha kind of has a little bit of an issue of consistency, you can't really use a lot of non-engine cards in this deck. Uh, so yeah, now let's see the spell cards. So of course, so first is Spellbook of Judgment, the card that just came back from the ballast, from the Forbidden section. So of course, I think you probably know what this card does, but just in case I will explain it. So that uh, during the end phase of the turn, I activate this card, I can search uh, Spellbook spell cards, up to the number of uh, spell cards I activate, this turn and that just doesn't that doesn't just include spellbook spell cards but also any spell I activate during the turn so it can be any generic spell cards or even like I said pendulum pendulum cards are also quite the spells when you activate them in the pendulum scale so that would mythical piece also count uh, as well so after the number of spell cards I activate and then I can spell someone the spell cards type monster whose level is equal to or lower than the number of uh, cards I added with this effect. So of course, it's a really broken card. 
but I got in easy to live without it. I, yeah, fortunately so. So I think this card will probably come to free in the future. Then of course I use that the triple spellbook of secrets to search out all my spellbooks. It can search out any spellbook card, so I can search out spellbook magician of prophecy as well. So that will be a very important card for this deck. Then I use two spellbook of knowledge, which are the newer spellbooks. Uh, that will be pretty much a destiny draw or one that I want for this deck. That will be a really good card for sure. And we, of course, we didn't have it before when spellbook judgment was actually legal. Then one spellbook power as well. On the more iffy spellbooks, it can be a little bit tricky if you can't really use it and stuff like that. It's just a spellbook name, more or less. It can be pretty good, uh, it can give your spell cost of attack, and then when that uh, monster destroys a monster of battle, you get another, another spellbook from the deck. It's only pretty good, but again, it's uh, not as good as other cards in the deck. Then one spellbook card of eternity, so this card can add a banished uh, spellbooks uh, to the hand, so they only a pretty good, but I don't really want to run any more than one because it can be a little bit tricky. Then I use one spellbook master, which can copy spellbook uh, spell card effects that are normal spells. Again, only run one because I don't want to prick. And to activate this card, uh, this card you have to have another spellbook in your hand as well to reveal. Then I run two spellbook fate. Of course, one of the main card spell cards in the deck, more or less. It's uh, really amazing because of course most of them you want to use the third effect that you banish free you're going to banish one card your point controls non directing non-destruction very amazing um, obviously this card is actually a, a lot more expensive because it hasn't has never been reprinted so yeah that will be a very important card in this deck then one spellbook of wisdom Kind of like a four-wheel lance in the stack. It pretty much you activate it, and then all our spell cards can't be affected by either spells or tap effects. So that will be very good. Then the last spell book I use in this deck is one the Grand Spellbook Tower. Uh, this pretty much uh, is part of your resource loop, more or less. That in the start phase, you can put a spell book spell card from your graveyard back to the bottom of the deck, and then draw an extra card. So that will be really good, and also when it's destroyed, you can spawn a spellcaster from the deck as well. Depending on the number of spellbooks you have in your graveyard. That will be uh, very good for sure. Then I use another engine to like uh, get uh, more spellbooks with judgment. I use uh, two uh, four spell albums to send any spell tap from my deck to the graveyard. Then I use uh, one magician's right hand. It's pretty good of course because if you control spellcaster, any of the uh, first spell card to activate is immediately negated and then it's destroyed as well. But of course uh, you can't choose pretty much uh, yeah, they can pretty much play it out very easily, but I think it's still really good because they have to pretty much sacrifice one of the spells to activate anything else. And I use one magician's rest stage pretty much to um, send it the full spiral goods and then get your magician's right hand from the deck. But it also is a pretty decent uh, on field effect as well that you can build on one of the level 3 or lower spellcasts from the graveyard. It's only pretty good. Now let's draft cards. So I use triple Swarm Judgment. A very good card, of course, for this deck because you have to protect your setup, uh, your Shogun from monsters, and as well as your back row from uh, back row removal like Lightning Storm and Taurus Duster. Thin Twister, stuff like that. So definitely a very good card for the stack. Then I use triple Bazoic Dynamiscus. Obviously it's really good. You can watch your try to face up card. Then you discard one card and banish that uh, card. And also it, if you activate on a trap, it can be much summon itself as a monster as well. Then you can go for like a rank 2 monster. Potentially fellow magician. And also I think it's just pretty good because uh, all of the time you get so much advantage with Sprogus Judgment that uh, this card doesn't really even matter. And of course, of course, good, really good protection for uh, Chaogan if you don't have your Spellbook Fate. So all around a really amazing card in this deck. And then the last card in the main deck is uh, Triple Mirror Force, the classic type card. 
So obviously it's very important to protect your chogan and also from a massive a field your plant makes and they probably will try to attack you. So they will be really good for that as well and they will probably will never see it coming because a lot of people don't really play this card anymore. Now let's see the extra deck, which doesn't really matter much at all. I only really summon one card in this extra deck consistently, that's of course Crowley the first professor to search the most spell books, but here is the extra deck. So one here of the prophecy, just in case if I can go for rank 7, which I think it's probably never, more or less. Then E1 High Magician, it's pretty good as well. Number 1 P Guy, Rain Ice Flare Metal Dragon, D1 Arsenal A.A. Zeus, of course. Dawn and Magician, because it's a spell cast and can do well you are your lower ranked monsters. And Shining Elf, Gachi Gachi Gantetsu, then Synchros. Enlightenment Paladin, because I can throw you some of the effect where and high priestess. Arcane Magician, then Celine, Queen of the Mass Magicians. Then the only card I actually summon in the stack is two. Crowley, the first Professor. Of course, search out your spell books can be very important for consistency. And then one Daybreaker, the Shining Magical Warrior. Pretty good. Then one Patlovlio, the top and later, which can modify our levels. Pretty, pretty okay, I guess. So that was the stack. So now let's, uh, I will show you the main combo for this stack, which is just to summon Jogan with protection. So now I'm going to show you one of the best combos in this stack you can do. That will be a very simple combo, I would say. So for this combo, you need so much as a prophecy, Spellbook Streets, and the way to get into Spellbook Knowledge as well. So first I'm going to activate. No one summons Pokemon Chasm Prophecy. I create a fact to search out Spellbook Judgment. Then you're going to activate Spellbook Judgment. And now the first spell you're going to activate after Judgment is Spellbook Seeds. So you're going to Spellbook Master. Then Activate Master, Reveal Knowledge, and then Start Secrets and search out another Spellbook spell card. So that's the second spell. Search out Spellbook Fate, because you need, it for, need to protect your Chogan. And then you like to show Knowledge as the third spell card. Get rid of a Spellbook, which is a Provost, and draw two random cards. So that's what's just the first spell. I'm just gonna set the spell of fate. At the end phase, I'm gonna search out three spell books. So more time you have fate, you want to go for eternity at least, see so it's and tower probably as well to get the resource loop going as well. Then of course you're gonna spell someone, your chunk and spirit list from the deck. So pretty much just by activating three spells, you have Chogan that locks out everyone from spell summoning, three cards from uh, judgment, and of course you have protection as well. So if they normal summon like a bigger monster, so you can then they try to get toward the Chogan in the battle phase to activate fate. Banish your free spell books from the graveyard and get rid of the monster, and then they are kind of screwed for us. And then next turn, you just keep your resource loop, loop going, protect your Chogan until you can finish the game. So that was my uh, prophecy uh, deck profile. I will keep improving this deck for sure, and I will probably will try to keep using it in some tournaments as well. So, I hope you enjoyed this uh, UGA tech profile. For now, goodbye and Omakios, out.